see if I can get a video going here today. Hopefully my voice lasts long enough. It won't be, it won't be a long video. It'll just be talking about the importance of dispensations. I guess the first thing we should do is define what is dispensations. So dispensations is a doctrine, a theological doctrine, I believe. You could say you can call it that. Where you you uh you place verses to the right time period and to the and to the right group of people. Okay? Everything in the Bible is the word of God, yes, but not everything applies to the church. Okay? There are things in, in the Bible that don't apply to Christians, that apply to Jews. And even that, there are parts of the Bible that apply to Jews in a certain period of time. That's not this time. Okay? If we want to talk about two basic dispensations that are in the Bible, it's the dispensation of say the old testament the old covenant and now we're right now we find ourselves in the dispensation of the new covenant so you have the old covenant or the the dispensation of the law and now we're in the dispensation of grace or the church period the church era that's where we find ourselves today so there are different dispensations in the bible i'm not going to go through all of them you know, you have the dispensations of uh, innocence, conscience, and and so on and so forth. And most of these dispensations, if not all, are initiated by covenants that God made with certain people at certain different periods of time. And that's the way that's the way God revealed Himself over time. Uh, dispensation meaning to dispense. So God was dispensing revelation, okay, at different periods of time to different people. So, like I said, the two basic dispensations we see in the Bible is Old Testament and New Testament. So there are things written in the Old Testament that apply to people of the Old Testament, mainly Jews. There, there are scriptures in the Old Testament that would apply to a Jews exclusively. There are promises, in fact, in the, in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, that apply to Jews only. Not every, not every promise in the Bible is made to us, the Christians. Not every promise in the Bible is made to us. For example, God promised the Hebrews that, and I'm not going to quote it verbatim. I'm just trying to remember how it goes. And since I don't study the Bible in English too much, I have a problem quoting it in English. But God promised to the Hebrews that the land which their, their feet would touch, you know, wherever they traveled, um, that would be their land. Or wherever they entered, that would be the land. So that promise to the Hebrews does not apply to the church, does not apply to Christians today. But yeah, I see Christians going to see a property or a, or a, a lot of land or a house or a business and they name it and claim it and they quote, the scripture where God made that promise to Israel and they 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 want to twist God's arm into giving them that that land and fulfilling that promise that was not made to Christians that promise was made to the ancient Hebrews okay so there's one bad application or mis misapplication of scripture because we don't take into account dispensations okay in that instance that's a double application of dispensation because 
that scripture doesn't apply to this time period or to the church. It applies to a period of time in the past to a group of people, mainly the, the Jews, you know, Hebrews. So it's very important that we take into consideration the dispensations so we don't so we don't get the doctrine wrong or apply the scripture wrong to our lives. Okay. Um, what else can I say about dispensations and how important it is? Um, dispensations refers to, like I said, time periods, different time periods and different groups of people. What I mean by different groups of people is that in the Bible, you have three people groups. You have, you have the Jews, you have the Gentiles, and you have the church. Those are three different people groups. Now, there are scriptures that apply to Jews exclusively, and there are scriptures that applies to Gentiles. When I say Gentiles, I'm referring to the nations. God makes a difference between Israel and the nations. Now, you say, well... Oh, I thought God was impartial or he makes no, you know, no difference between people. No, he, he does. As far as salvation, he don't, he don't care what race you are, what people you are. He'll save you if you believe the gospel. But he does make distinction when he, with, between people as far as other things. Um, so you have those three people groups. Gentiles will be the nations. There are promises in scripture in the Bible that are for the nations, the nations that are not Christians and the nations that are, you know, not Jewish. Obviously, if you're the nations, you're not Jewish. You're not part of the, you're not part of Israel. There are promises in scripture that apply only exclusively to Israel. And some of those scriptures apply to Israel during a, a specific period of time during this look I'll tell you what Matthew 24 many people think that Matthew 24 is referring to a period of time even though he's talking about future events there are parts of Matthew 24 that people want to Christians want to apply to themselves today for example when the Lord tells the disciples, let me see if I say this correctly, because I'm trying to remember it. Well, I can't quote it word for word, but it's the verse that says that, that those that persevere till the end, they will be saved. Persevere to the end, they will be saved. Does that verse apply to us today? Is that verse even written, you know, to us, the believers, the Christians? See, we have to take into account the context, the dispensations, the period of time, and the people group who he's talking to. See, the whole thing on Matthew 24, he's talking to Jews in the land of the Jews about what's going to happen to Jews in the land of the Jews during the period of the Great Tribulation. That's what that has to do with. It has nothing to do with our time period right now. Because... Nobody is saved because of, their, because of personal effort. Because you persevere to the end and then, then you're saved. Nobody is saved by their own merits. So he's talking about a different time period to a different people group. He's talking to Jews about how people are going to be saved during the Great Tribulation. They have to persevere to the end and not take the mark of the beast. That's what they have to persevere in. They have to persevere so they don't take the mark of the beast and they be lost, but they have to persevere to the end. A Christian is not saved by persevering. Now, you can get closer to God, you can know more of, you know, more of his word, you can sanctify yourself more and more by persevering, but you're not saved by things you do. Those are all things we do. So nobody is saved by things we do because the Bible says in 
that we are saved by grace, not by works. And and that not of ourselves, it is a gift of God. I'm, I'm paraphrasing the verse. But it says that we're saved by grace, not by works. There's nothing we, we do to help our situation as far as salvation goes. Christ, he paid it all. He finished. He said on the cross, it is finished. So he paid the wages that we were supposed to pay, which is death. Papa, yes. I love Papa too. So, nobody is saved by by whatever you you know whatever person does nobody it's, it's by grace through faith and that's it no works involved our salvation has no works involved in it don't let nobody lie to you and tell you you got to do this you got to do that you got to be like this you got to be like that or you're going to hell no now we do believe in sanctification sanctification is the process okay but at the moment you're saved, you're instantaneously sanctified before the Lord. In a in a in a uh, in an instant, we're sanctified in the sense that God will look at us as holy, but we must go through the process of sanctification, of putting off putting off works of the flesh. That ain't gonna that ain't gonna come overnight. That comes with time. Okay? Now watch this. Watch this. I'm not saying, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I believe in once saved, always saved. That's not what I'm saying. There are denominations that teach that. Yes. I'm not saying that's what I'm, I'm believing in. I'm telling you that salvation is through work, uh, through Forgive me for that. Salvation is not through works. It's by grace. Now, there's going to become a period where salvation is going to be both faith and works. And that's during the Great Tribulation period. You're going to need faith and works. That's why it says that who perseveres till the end, they'll be saved. Because they're going to need works along with faith. The same thing James talks about in his epistle. That's not addressed to Christians. That part where he says that the man is justified by, by works and not by faith alone, that contradicts what Paul says, that a man is justified by faith without the need of works, he says in Galatians. So there's a contradiction there, an apparent contradiction. And that's why I say it's important that we take into account the dispensations so that the Bible makes more sense. If we don't take into account the dispensations, then we're going to run into all kinds of contradictions. There are contradictions in the Bible, but they're just apparent contradictions. Because if you use dispensations to separate the verses to the right period of time to the right to the proper people, then it'll make sense. You see, James says that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Well, that goes against what Paul says in Galatians, that the man is justified by, by faith without the need of works. So how do we make sense of this contradiction? Dispensations. Paul is writing to the Galatians in the time period of the church age. The period of grace. That's why it's by grace. And not by works. Now James. Is writing to Jews. If you read the beginning of the book of James. He clearly addresses his. Epistle. To the 12 tribes that are dispersed. Well who are the 12 tribes that are dispersed? That's the Jews. See. Dispensations have to do. With time periods. And people groups. And James is addressing his epistle mainly. There's, there's some Christian doctrine in James too. But that particular portion where he says that the man is justified by works and not by faith alone. 
That's not Christian doctrine. That is not for Christians to apply. That is for Jews to apply. Okay? During the period of the Great Tribulation. Because that's where Jesus speaks of the, those that persevere till the end shall be saved. And he's talking to Jews about what's going to happen to Jews during the period of the Great Tribulation. James is speaking the same thing. You have to place James' writing right there, that verse, in the right time period for the right people group. It is not addressed to Christians in this church age. That would contradict what Paul says, that we are saved by grace, not by works. And it would contradict what he says to the Galatians, that we find that the man is justified by faith without the need of works. You see how important dispensations is to properly interpret the scriptures? That's just one example. I can bring up more examples. For example, I spoke about this before. Paul writes to the Galatians and tells them that if, if, if them, if the apostles, if they, he says, if we, speaking of himself and the apostles, or an angel from heaven would preach to you a different gospel than the one that's been preached by the apostles, that angel should be accursed. He said, let him be accursed. Let him be anathema. So an angel couldn't possibly be preaching a different gospel. He would be cursed. If you see an angel preaching a different gospel than the gospel Paul preached, that angel should be damned to hell. That angel will, will be damned to hell if he did it. Okay? So he's saying to the church in the church age period, right now, if an angel came to, in this time period to any church or to any person and that angel preached a different gospel than the one Paul preached, that angel would be cursed right now. But when you go to Revelation chapter 14, we find that there's an angel flying and preaching a gospel. And he's preaching it to all the nations. It's, and he's preaching a different gospel. He's not preaching the gospel that Paul preached. So, is that angel cursed? Or is that angel blessed? Paul says if an angel came with a different gospel than the one they preach, let him be cursed. This is where dispensations come into effect here. This is where it's important to put it in the proper dispensation. Obviously, if an angel from heaven came right now preaching a different gospel than the one Paul preached, that angel would be cursed. And the angel in Revelation is preaching a different gospel than the one Paul preached. It says he's preaching the everlasting gospel. That's not the gospel Paul preached. And it even says what he it even says what the what the angel is preaching. The angel is not preaching the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the gospel that Paul preached. He's not preaching that gospel. He's saying, fear God. I'm trying to quote it, but I can't because I don't remember it in English. But he's saying to fear God. And some other things he's saying, but it's not, it's not the gospel Paul preached. So he's preaching a gospel that the Bible calls the everlasting gospel, but it has nothing to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's called the everlasting gospel. So what do we do with that angel? He should be cursed if he's preaching it in the dispensation of, of the church age of grace. Well, obviously... He's that, that that taking place in a different dispensation. That takes place in the time period of the Great Tribulation. See, in the Great Tribulation, there's thing, there's things that's going to happen that have nothing to do with the church. The church is not going to be here. Okay, the church is not going to be here. I believe after I don't want to misquote it or say it wrong. 
But I believe after chapter, oh gosh, I can't remember which chapter, but there's a certain chapter where the church doesn't show up in the book of Revelation until the end. It shows up in the beginning, first few chapters, and then I think till chapter 19 is when it shows back up, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to say it wrong, but I think it's around there. <clears throat> but people think that when the Revelation speaks of the saints, it's talking about the church. That's not the church in Revelation. The saints are those believers that, that convert during the Great Tribulation. That's what he's speaking of. That's why it says, there's a verse in there. Oh, I don't know how to say it in English. I'm going to try to say the best I can. There's a verse in there where the dragon goes after the saints. I believe it's the dragon. Goes after the saints and he defeats the saints. He defeats the saints. I'm, I'm, I'm not using, I'm probably not using the right, the correct. The exact word but he basically prevails against the saints during the time period of the great tribulation well if those saints in revelation is the church that was defeated by state by the by the dragon which is satan if that is the church then what do we do with the verse where jesus said that upon this rock i will build my church and he says that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, against her or it. I can't quote it word for word. I'm paraphrasing. What do we do with that? What do we do with what Jesus told Peter about the church? And that the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Because we find in Revelation that the saints were defeated by the dragon. So now we have another contradiction. Jesus is saying one thing. And then we see in Revelation something contrary to what Jesus said. Well, obviously, we got to take into account that the saints it speaks of in Revelation cannot be the church. It can't be the church. Jesus said it would, they wouldn't prevail against the church. And in Revelation it says it, it, that the dragon prevailed against the saints. So the saints and the church are two different people. So anyway, I just wanted to say that it's important that we take into account the dispensations, which means putting verses at the right time period and to the right group of people. That would clear up a lot of confusion and a lot of apparent contradictions in the Bible, which most contradictions are not really contradictions. They're apparent contradictions because we don't take into account dispensations or the context of what is being written and that's very important that we take into account the context and the dispensations so that's all i had to say god bless and i hope uh i hope y'all learned something and if you got any comments just you know write your comments and everything or ask your questions and we'll see if uh we hammer it out nothing wrong with a little healthy debate as long as it's respectful okay that's how things get worked out so God bless and see y'all in the next in the future video perhaps.